today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding our trigonometric values at a specific point. Um, the past few days it's been a point on the unit circle where our radius has been 1. Now our radius is going to change. So I'm going to give us, in all of our examples, a point x, y. And we're going to have to find the radius. We use our Pythagorean theorem. That's what this is to find our radius. So now what we have is we have a triangle here where we can really think about this as theta. Okay, so the sine of theta, remember, opposite over hypotenuse. So that's y over r. The cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of that. The cosine adjacent over r. Secant is our reciprocal. Tangent, y over x. And cotangent's going to be x over y, our reciprocal. So really, we've been doing this already. Just remember, r in all of these cases is not going to be 1. Okay? On our unit circle, it was 1. Now it is not. Okay, the point lies on the terminal side of theta in a standard position. Find the exact value of the six trigonometric functions for theta. Now draw out this point. Make sure it's in the correct quadrant. So I go one, two, three, four over and five up. So that's my point. So I rotated from the terminal from the initial side, which is 0 over. Now you draw your triangle back to the x-axis because of reference angles. Remember, the reference angle in this quadrant here, theta, is going to be able to get us all of our trig values as long as we have the correct signs, meaning I have to have that be negative 4, we have to have that being 5. To find our radius, we do our Pythagorean theorem. r squared equals 5 squared plus negative 4 squared, so r squared is equal to 25 plus 16, so r squared is equal to 41, so r in this case is the square root of 41. So now all you have to do is set up your chart. We have the sine of theta, its reciprocal, cosecant of theta. Okay, so the sine of theta, opposite over hypotenuse. So 5 over root 41. Make sure you rationalize the denominator. So I multiply by root 41 over four, root 41. So I get 5 root 41 all over 41. Now cosecant. Take the reciprocal of this original, because when I take the reciprocal of the original, that's going to get me, when I need it, it's going to get me a rationalized expression. Now let's do our cosine of theta, and its reciprocal, secant of theta. Okay, so now, cosine is adjacent. Take the negative sign with it, negative 4. And our radius, which is the square root of 41. One thing I forgot to mention is r is always positive. Okay, your radius, no matter where you're at, is always positive. So I multiply by root 41 over root 41. And I get that. So now take the reciprocal of this original one, again, because that's already rationalized for me. So I don't have to do a lot of work. Next we have our tangent. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, so that's going to be negative 5 fourths. And its reciprocal, which is cotangent, it's going to be the reciprocal of that, negative 4 fifths. The next example is a special case of this. So we have a point lies on the terminal side of theta, 
and our point now is on one of the axes and it's a little bit different. So our point lies on the axes. 0, negative 1. What you want to lay out is what x is, what y is, and what r is. x is 0, obviously, y is negative 1. The radius of this circle would be positive 1. Again, your radius is always positive. So we're looking for the sine of theta. It's reciprocal. The cosine of theta, it's reciprocal, secant. And the tangent of theta, it's reciprocal, cotangent. Okay, sine was y over r. Negative 1 over 1 or negative 1? The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. Cosine x over r, so that's 0 over 1, which simplifies to be 0. Secant, when I take the reciprocal, we can't have 0 in the bottom, so this is undefined. Tangent, y over x, negative 1 over 0, so that is equal to undefined. Now when I take the reciprocal of negative 1 over 0, we get 0 over negative 1, which simplifies to be 0. So that's one of our special cases, so keep that in mind. On these special cases, and even on your original, you might want to lay out what x, y, and r equal to help you with the problems. Nice short video today. Um, there are your lesson questions. Please make sure they are submitted on time.